spoiler alert, we only use prime lenses. Not a single zoom lens over here. So today we're gonna chat through all the reasons why. Why yep. we made that choice, why we keep doing that, why that's our vibe. So Cam, give us an intro. Yep. Why are we feeling this? Okay, so I feel like there's maybe five or six main reasons that were a big Ooh. selling point. So I think we'll work through each of those individually, but also note as a caveat, like different lenses are going to have different values or different benefits. And so like, while these six are kind of like the overarching big picture reasons why, obviously it's gonna depend if you're comparing one specific lens to another specific lens. Like there might be, yeah. this lens might actually, spoiler alert, be lighter than our prime lens, but overall quality, all this other stuff, all these other factors taken into account, the reason we chose the prime lens is for these reasons. Yeah, nice. So I think, start with a spoiler, size and weight is a huge reason why. In general, prime lenses will be smaller and lighter than the equivalent quality focal length type zoom lens in that range. What's an example? Like a 50 is going to be lighter than a 2470? Yeah. Generally, and part of that is because there are multiple extra elements in the 2470 to allow it to zoom from 24 to 70, yeah. rather than the minimum required elements. Because generally, you're not going to want more elements in your lens because that just allows for more diffraction, more potential elements causing glare or other issues in your lens. Uh, yeah, so I love lighter. A, for my backpack. I yes. still haven't quite figured out a backpack <laughs> that is comfortable for a full day for me. Especially Cam and I are not someone who brings like a roller suitcase and puts it somewhere and then kind of comes back to that. We have our backpacks on us for most of the day yep. so that we can switch, 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 get through a lot of different lenses. And if I had a lot more heavy things in there, oof, I would be done for. Also, honestly, I have kind of smaller hands <laughs> yeah. and I'm a little more fragile. Uh -huh. And um, even some of our Just heavier that lenses, you need, yeah. yep, like this 85, is heavy for me and I know that that might not compare to something yeah. that's like a 70 to 200 I'm scared of maybe holding that um, so that's why I think the lightness is great for us I also think we do travel yep. and so bringing a larger lens kit along especially to a wedding in which we kind of need our full display we do need our full display that's another benefit to it any others definitely I will say there's also the reverse side of this for us obviously if we're gonna have a 35, a 50, and an 85. Yeah. Whereas those three lenses, I mean, just these two alone, the 85 and the 50 are pretty hefty lenses. These three of them probably weigh probably, more yeah. than the 24, 70. But I think that kind of leads in to the next point. Also, the image quality and third point, the aperture, like the amount of light we can get into these lenses is going to be better with a prime lens in general. Which is a main reason yes. why these two combined is probably our number one reason of right. why we shoot with prime Absolutely. Lenses. So like yeah. some people, yes, they'll have their 2470 and their 7200 and maybe that's it. Done. They carry that might be two lenses and that's, I mean, that's a pretty enticing deal for a lot of people. Just yeah. literally carry two lenses and that's all you need throughout the whole day. And so like total weight of their bag, probably less than ours when we're carrying you know, sometimes four or five lenses a piece. Yeah, less complicated day. too. They yeah, know definitely. that they're gonna be able to hit a range with mm -hmm. their first lens and hit a range with their second lens and be able to go all the way from 24 to 200. Um, that can be really enticing. Definitely, but, but when we start comparing <laughs> the 85 against zoomed in to an 85 of a 7200, this 85 is gonna win every single time. Do you ever feel anxiety every single time that you head to a shoot? Constantly. Are you stuck in a posing rut, not sure what to do? Yes. <laughs> We've got you covered. We have a totally free training, all on posing, that we would love to have you join for. Join us in your PJs with your camera off for our hour-long posing training. We can't wait to see you. Go save your seat in the link in the description down below. Bye. You're gonna have the convenience, obviously, of being able to just zoom for your different aspects, yeah, for sure. For things that are moving quickly or you're changing but, between stuff. Again, having fewer elements in this lens versus a zoom lens and having to get into the right focal length and everything, the image quality of this is going to be better than shooting even the best 7200 lens you can get at 85 millimeters. Like this will be it every time. Mm -hmm. Another reason it's going to be it is because the aperture is so much lower. This 85 can go down to 1.2, which is wild. You're not going to find a 7200 that's ever going to get anywhere close mm -hmm. to 1.2. Like you're lucky if you can get down to a 2.4 or a 2.2 for some of the 2470s 
and those get pretty pricey as well. But often you're going to be stuck at shooting wide open at like a 2.8. And that's a drastic difference for people like us who shooting solo or duo portraits, we are often going to be 1.8. Like mm -hmm. we're gonna be right around there and we love that and that's very signature to our look. We love the bokeh to that, we love the compression of that. Like that's going to be very important to us. And so then to not be able to even get down there, like that's not how we shoot our entire day. Definitely, you know? and also it's a big game changer in low light because going yeah. from the option of a 1.2 to let's say a 2.8. There's also some 7200s that started at 4.0. That is six to eight to probably like 12 stops of light in between there. And so you think every single stop, you're doubling the amount of light that comes in. So rather than shooting at one eight thousandth of a second because we can go wide open, we're stuck going way down to one one hundredth of a second or something yeah, like that. Like yeah. it's just like, it's a crazy amount of difference. And that makes a huge difference when you're low light, when we're stuck shooting one one hundredth of a second with an 85 at 1.2, so we don't have to jump our ISO up to some crazy number. Mm -hmm. With a 7200, shooting at 2.8 even, you're gonna have to bump that ISO six more stops to get to that same level. Yeah. And you're introducing noise and other quality issues into your photo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So speed, what we're talking about here, is yeah. point number four. Tell us more about that. Definitely, and so, I mean, like we've been talking about, shooting low light, being able to shoot faster at lower noise levels with your ISO. But then mm -hmm. also, if you're shooting a motion, just in general, if we're out frolicking with a couple, we don't want to be stuck shooting one one hundredth of a second with our 85 while they're running around because unless we're intentionally going for some blurry shots, we're going to get some blurry shots. Yeah. Yeah. So having the option to then just bump that ISO a couple stops, then bump our shutter speed a couple stops and still have a really nice, high quality, low ISO image mm -hmm. while still being able to stop motion, it's going to be a huge benefit over being stuck at 2.8 or 4.0 or something like that yeah. and trying to figure out how I'm going to still get a non-noisy but motion stopping image. Yeah. Gets kind of tricky in there. The other benefit is in general, a prime lens in the same focal length and quality range as a zoom lens is going to cost less. Obviously we have some exceptions with a new RF range of lenses from Canon. They can get quite expensive quite fast, but in general, if you're comparing a prime lens to a zoom lens in a similar focal length range and a similar quality, the prime lens is going to be cheaper. Again, because it has fewer elements it needs to do. It has less of a range it needs to cover. It's literally doing one job and one job really well. And so that's a big benefit. Okay, and what is point number six? Point number six, I think, comes out of creativity. A it's a little one. bit more abstract, yeah. I think with a zoom lens, obviously, you can get pretty creative. You can stand in one spot and get seven different types of shot, all from the same exact physical point. And that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think, though, if I'm shooting with a zoom lens, at the end of the day, I might start to get a little bit lazy because I can stand in one physical spot and I can get four different types of shots that I need. I can get the close-up, I can get the full body, I can get a yeah. kind of setting the scene type shot and boom, done, check, next. Mm -hmm. And all that was in the exact same spot. Not a whole lot different than taking one giant shot and just cropping in three times sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously quality different, but same general thought process. With a fixed focal length lens, I am physically required to move my feet to get those different shots, yeah. which I think is a big benefit. I think as I'm walking up, I'm seeing new things or I'm forced to reevaluate how I want to do this shot as I get closer, I can get new angles, new focal points, like all these different things because I'm required to move myself. And I think that just inspires creativity as I'm moving. I've never just stopped my feet, sitting here for a little bit, done, okay, moving on. I also think an underlying benefit, like not a primary reason, but just something that's like almost like a conclusion or like a consequence to this is because you have to walk, it almost like forces an experience being made. Yeah. When you get closer, yeah. you are going to have this more intense touch point with your couple when you're getting a tight close up, which makes sense because they're having a more intense close moment. When you step back and get the scenery and allow them to have time to themselves, that's an underlying benefit. That's when they're making memories. That's when they have time to just like embrace the moment. So it's like allowing an experience to happen more because it matches the way that the experience feels, whether you're tight and close, whether you're far out. And then what Cam's saying about like that moment of that, like that takes him a couple steps to get closer to observe something else that also allows you a couple moments to say something to them. That also allows you a couple moments to connect with them. Yep. Like it allows the moments to breathe more. So your clients are making more memories. Definitely. Again, I don't think that's a primary reason to like shoot with a prime lens, but I no. think that that's a, 
extra benefit that's kind of a consequence of the way yeah. it works. In the grand scheme, all of these factors combined led us to be like, this is the right choice for us. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, anything else you want to add? That's I don't think so. Let us know if we missed anything or if there's another reason you love to use either Zoom or Prime lenses and why you decided to go that route. Yeah, drop it in the comment section down below. We would love to chat with mm -hmm. you. Let's chat about it. And if you liked this video, be sure to hit like. We can make more videos like this. We can get a little chatty about some gear stuff. Be sure to hit subscribe. That supports us so much, yep. more than you would ever know. And until next time, bye! <laughs>